Hello. I hope all of you are doing well today. Um, had to go to town today and oh, it was so busy. Just taking care of errands and uh, I feel like I'm just pooped, worn out. But I'm going to deny my flesh and go ahead and uh, do our Bible study today. I hope y'all can catch it this evening when y'all are not too busy. Um, still been looking at and studying and praying on uh, God's sovereignty. And I know the last video we talked, we learned about God's sovereignty. But there's a lot more to it. So, I'm just going to just ask God to be with us right now. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, God, for all of our many blessings, Lord, that you have given us. Thank you for our health and our mind, Lord, for our right spirit being within us. God, I pray that you would open our ears and our hearts to your word today. pray that, God, you would use my mouth as an instrument, Lord, for uh, to just speak your, speak your word, Lord, as you would want me to teach it. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So... Um, I go through, let me turn this fan off for just a second. I go through things like I'm sure many other people go through, like uh, insecurities. Um, insecurities in a lot of different areas. So, one of my insecurities that I will share with y'all is an insecurity of not being able to reach people through my teachings. To not do it right or not be good enough. Um, so, anyway, I've been dealing with that for a couple months now. And God, within this time period, has just brought several me and, and told me that, you know, we appreciate you. You know, a couple weeks ago, it was a nurse from the community medical where I used to work told me that they were in the hospital with COVID at two something in the morning and that um, somehow or another my video popped on and there I was. There's old Jackie. She's I apologize. Um, poor connection it said. It is really windy outside so maybe that's the connection problem. But anyway, my point is that she was like, well there's old Jackie, you know, and so she listened to it and said that she was really encouraged. And a couple other people has mentioned that to me. And then today I walk in Walmart and this lady, she's like, Hey, I don't know you and you don't know me, but I see your writings and hear your teachings. And I want you to know that they inspire and bless me. And I'm not quoting her word for word. I can't, you know, it was going right into Walmart. And so a lot of stuff going on then. But <laughs> anyway, it's just over and over and over. My father has confirmed to me. That he is more than enough through me. And that makes me more than enough. So, with him teaching through me, it doesn't matter if five people listen. If one people, one person listen and, and uh, is blessed through it, encouraged, inspired through God's word. Um, that's enough. So, God's in control of all that. But that was one of the examples about overcoming insecurity due to God's sovereignty. The sovereignty of God means that as ruler of the universe, God is free and has the right to do whatever he wants to do. He is not bound or limited by the dictates of his created beings. Further, he is in complete control over everything that happens on earth. God's will is the final cause of all things. All things, y'all, good or bad. It's not about how we think of it, how we may see it. It's about God's will and the sovereignty of God and how God's will is the final cause of all things. Okay, we worry about our finances, our job security, whether or not our marriage will make it, our health, our children, what will happen in our old age, our investments, and a whole lot of other personal issues that sap our mental, spiritual, and physical security. And we all have to deal with these issues. We must always remember that God not only knows the big picture, 
before we were born and even after we're gone. He also concerns himself with the tiniest details of us and our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Not Nothing surprises him or catches him off guard. Here are five statements that I found that unfold the meaning of God's sovereignty in more detail. He upholds all things. He governs all events, good and bad. He directs everything to its appointed end. He does this all the time and in every circumstance. This should bring security within us to know that no matter what, no matter what mistakes we may make, no matter what we do or don't do, God's will is going to come forth. And that that's very secure to me, you know, to know, well, Jackie, you sure have messed up a lot in your life. You know, you made some really poor decisions. You really, really have. But to know that God is sovereign and that little old Jackie couldn't mess up his plans no matter what I did or didn't do, it makes me feel comforted. It really does. Okay, back to my notes. Uh, he does it always for our own good and our, and our good in the end. So God does it for our own good, whether we see it or feel it. He still does. The Word of God says he does, and that's what's true, God's Word. A lot of times we do not immediately see the good. A lot of times it may take years on down the road when you can look back and say, okay, okay, I see why God allowed this or that to happen. In the words of R.C. Sproul, God doesn't roll dice. Nothing happens by chance, ever, ever. In Matthew 10, verse 29, are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of our Father? You think about that. If you check your Bible dictionary, you'll discover that sparrows are among the humblest birds in Bible times. They were considered food for the poor, and because they were so cheap, the poor could offer them in sacrifice to the Lord if they couldn't afford a lamb or a goat or a bull. You could buy two sparrows for one penny. And that's really cheap by any standard. So, you know, two for a dollar, sparrows. And just think about this now. Stay on the page with me. I'd always thought that Jesus was saying that God watches the sparrow when they fall. And he does take notice, true enough. He does see the sparrow when it falls. But this verse is saying much more to my heart. Not only does God see the sparrow when it falls, the sparrow cannot and will not fall apart from God's will, y'all. The mention of the word father makes it very tender and personal to me. It's not as if sparrows fall at random from the trees and God takes note when it happens. Oh, there's another one. The sparrow falls because God willed it to fall. And if he didn't, the sparrow would never fall and hit the ground. I mean, when you get your spiritual cap on and you go to digging in this and you see the sovereignty of God. I don't feel like such a failure all the time. You know, when I see that God is in full control. Now, note these two implications of this truth. Even the little sparrow falls to the ground eventually. Sooner or later, troubles do come to all of God's children. All of us were not exempt. Sometimes we fall into the thinking that coming to Christ will solve all of our problems so that we will be free from trouble and sadness. Not so. Not so. He makes his reign to fall on the just and the unjust, y'all. What happens to people of the world happens to us too. They get sick. Guess what? We sometimes get sick. They lose their jobs. We sometimes lose our jobs. They have family problems. We have family problems. They have, uh, they get ripped off. We get ripped off. They get cancer. We can get cancer. They die. We die. They have loved ones that die. We have loved ones that die. 
So, it is the same for us as everyone else. Though we know the Lord, and we are not exempt from any of the trials and troubles of this world. So, what's the difference? What makes it different? What makes it different is we have a hope, and we know God. We know Him personally. We know His sovereignty. And it gives us great peace and trust. And we can relax and know Oh, Lord, I'm going through so much right now, so much pain. But, God, I know you know about it. I know you knew before it was going to happen. And I know you're in control, and you're here with me, and you're going to work it out for my good, saith the word of God. Praise his name. Number two, the sparrows fall according to the Father's will. All things take place according to the counsel and decree of Almighty God all things there is a very real sense in which everything in the universe must fit into God's ultimate plan somehow everything even the falling of the sparrow is a part of God's sovereign plan this applies to our pain and our suffering our loss it applies to the heartache of watching our loved ones suffer even when trouble comes, God still cares for the tiniest details in each person's life. Matthew 10 and 30 says that, that the hairs of our head are numbered. The hairs of our head are numbered. Have you ever tried to count the number of hairs on your head? I haven't, I don't guess. <laughs> Maybe some people as children tried. I, I don't think I did. But... They're like trying to count the stars. Um, there's just too many. You'll lose count. There's too many. Um, it's really impossible to do. Our God is a God of the details. He numbers the hairs of our head. You think about that maybe it's not insignificant, but I'm going to use this word for right now, and y'all know what I'm talking about. Think of two, the two for a dollar. Two for a dollar sparrow. Two for a dollar sparrows. How insignificant that bird may seem. Think of how insignificant the numbered of our hairs is, you know. What does that matter? It does matter. You see what I'm saying? To God, it matters. And that lets us know the littlest thing, the things that might not even matter to us. Very, very important and significant to God. That's how much He loves us. That's how much He cares if God cares for things that matter so little, then he cares for things that matter much more, too. And if God knows each strand of hair individually, he knows each of us very individually as well. This means that God's knowledge of us is not just general, but amazingly specific and detailed. He knows us through and through, good and bad. And he still chose us. We should have such an intimate relationship with our Father that we talk to him all throughout the day. And we ask him things such as, what should I paint today? And I've asked God that. I'm using my little examples. What should I study today, God? What should I teach about this week, Lord? What should I testify about on Testimony Tuesday? And we're going to do that probably next Tuesday. And we'll try to do skip a week on that. Um... You know, even you may have done this too. You know, uh, God, let there be a, a close parking place for me. And they, bam, you know, and God does that. And you think, well, I don't know if that was really God because surely he can't, he's not going to hear me or that. That's so insignificant. The devil is a liar. It's not insignificant to God. And God loves that relationship of intimacy where um you know we can ask him for the little things like lord help me do this or god help my i'm sorry i guess it's the wind forgive me but just like you love for your children to come to you with things you know and it makes you feel like oh i can help my babies in this area or that area that's how god is he's our father the god who hung the stars in space is also the God who numbers the hairs on our head. <sighs> Powerful. Why should it surprise us that God arranges parking spaces when we need them? Why? 
or why should it surprise us if God makes the rain stop long enough for us to get ourselves and the groceries in our car? Because God's done that. I've testified about it before. Why should it surprise us that, you know, it is no harder for God to provide something large or to provide something small. Neither one is small or large to him because he's so grand. He's so big, y'all. We can't even grasp it. Matthew 10 and 31 says, So do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. You're worth more than the sparrows. We can trust him. We can trust Jesus. No matter how big, no matter how small, no matter if it seems insignificant, you take it you take it to God. He does hear us. And he does love us. And he will answer our prayers. So tiny little sparrows. Tiny little sparrows. Yes. We are worth more to God than them. So we're almost done. What then should this truth do for us? How should this help us? It should give us a boldness in knowing that we are a child of God. And if God is for us, and he is, why should we fear anything or anyone? It should give us confidence in the moment of uncertainty. Today, many things are unclear, uncertain, and undecided in this world. We all have many more questions than we have answers. We have confidence and security in God to know his faithfulness and that he and that we can trust him even when we may be in a fog. We can trust him. Keep your chin up and keep moving forward. Things that are unclear now will be made clear in the end. Our God will make all things plain and all his ways will be proved right, saith the word of God. It should give us hope in times of sorrow. This knowledge of his sovereignty should give us hope in times of sorrow. Oh, we weep. All of us weep. The tears flow behind closed doors. And this is true. And in the private moments of our life, yes. When we face death, how can we not weep? How can we not weep for our loved ones? And that we've been left behind. How can we not? Well, God's word says, be of good cheer. Even death itself is in God's hands. If you're a Christian, you cannot die before God's appointed time. You cannot die apart from God's appointed time. A Christian is immortal until his work on earth is done. So, why should we shake? Why should we fear? Let the word shake and fear, you know, be cast away. It is for us to be calm when others are giving way to fear. Our security is in Jesus Christ, our sovereign God. The bottom line is, do you believe God ordained all things according to his will, according to his purpose, according to his time? Do you believe that? If so, then there is no such thing as a little, little luck or fate or chance or abstinence. None. Let this great truth be a source of your security. Rest in Christ Jesus. It's not luck or chance. Whoever's watching this video, maybe we tonight, a year from now, it's not by chance. God wants you to hear his word, to know his sovereignty, so you can be at rest. So you can be at rest and not fret and worry about this. God's got it. He really does. Even when it seems like you don't, and God does, he has it. I love y'all, and I thank y'all for today, for joining in. I just pray that <clears throat> God uses this teaching to touch a very deep part of you and to help you to see that you can rest in Christ Jesus. I love y'all. See y'all next week. Be sure to share.